That's all you got your mind on. In the gutter about, once again. I'm a dirty boy. Welcome aboard. Mike Pedersen here, uh, along with some friends of mine. This is our first show, and uh, I'd like to introduce a few people here with you. Joe Ceruzzo here. Jumping Joe. Jumping Joe Ceruzzo. He's going to be handling a lot of the sports aspect of it, and Brian Harrington, who's going to be working alongside of him for this first show. We don't know where we're going to stick him at the next show, but we'll get him in there someplace. And then we also have even Steven, who will be here a little bit later. He'll be handling our musical end of the program. Uh, what I'd like to start off with right now is uh, we finished the football playoffs today, and our wonderful sports prognosticator right here, Joe Ceruzzo, is going to come up with some words of wisdom about what's gone on this weekend in football, the surprising upsets that we've had with both Carolina and Jacksonville. And he's going to let us know who he feels is going to be winning in the postseason championship games. Duh! Have you seen Ignatz? Has anybody seen Ignatz? I don't know. Has anybody really seen Ignatz? Ignatz has been missing now for over a month and nobody has found him. I think we need to send out the, uh, FBI. the uh, FBI, possibly CIA, to look for Ignatz. Well, he does. Well, maybe if we had more than a $5 uh, reward for him, we might find him. Did you see the Carolina game today? No. I swore I saw Ignatz in the stands watching the Carolina Panthers beat up on Dallas. I don't know. It could have. It could have been a. It could have been a phony. You know, those guys wearing masks. It looked like Ignatz. With well, an Ignatz head. Could have been an Ignatz head. Had an Ignatz head on. Yeah, they, yeah. Is it, it is, is, a is this? Am I sweating or somebody spitting on me? Jesus. It's probably me. God. I have a very bad speech impediment. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> speech impediment, Pedersen. Get making fun of me again? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm just making fun of disability, uh. disabled people. <laughs> Oh, what are we talking about? Let's let's get on the subject of sports. Well, All right, right. Yeah, take, take the Dallas, ball, baby. Carry the weight. Do you think the sex scandal had anything to do with Dallas <laughs> losing today? I, I think it you has. You think they shot their load? I I, th I think they might the have because Michael Irvin disappeared for the rest of the game. I don't know what it was. I think she was in the stands watching him. I think maybe that. Uh, what happened something? to him? She was anyway? holding a plastic what gun happened? and she was doing one of these and he got nervous and ran. Because I got uh, I was busy doing a few other things and then I. Started watching the game and they said Irvin was out of the game. What happened? I, I think he pulled the groin muscle. Oh. Yeah. Before or after the game? Uh, well, Before or during the game, I well, should say. Well, during. He was lining up behind Troy Aikman a lot. And yeah. That can be troublesome. Ball. That can be troublesome. So what's the lineup going to be for the Super Bowl then? This means uh, it's... Well, uh, I'll tell you, I, I believe New England uh, against Green Bay. You think so? You quote me on that. I'm telling you. Bet your house on it, your kids, your family, your grandmother, whatever you got to do, you do it. Do it. You just do it and get it done, and I think Green Bay is going to be victorious in the Super Bowl. How about them Rangers? Where's Ignatz? Has anybody seen Ignatz? It's probably at the Ranger game. It's probably at the Ranger game. Probably at the game. Ranger game. Ranger game. Hey, why not? Those boys are on the road. I tell you, one of the best things, Gretzky coming to New York, he, the man is a joy to watch. He mm -hmm. is a joy to watch night after night. And so is his wife. So anyway. is his wife. And it only cost us the fans money, because I don't go anymore. Right. The season tickets, forget that. Not paying these uh, overpaid athletes it's any more money. It's more comfortable sitting home and watching on cable. Exactly. It is. It's more hey. And you don't get as drunk. Watch right. you, you, can come beer, and you can come and watch us, that too. That garden beer, I'm sure, cut at least three or four years off my lifespan. Well, our lifespan, I Why should, should you say. pay $75 tickets so Patrick Ewing can call you a selfish fan? I right. believe it's wrong. Mandatory. Bump them out. Do whatever you got to do. Give these guys like $100 a game and that's it. Back to the old days. That's Please. right. I think let, them, let them work a regular let job work regular during the off season. And then have to go out and, you know... Go out and earn their damn salary. If we're right. pay for it. We'll have some nice reasonable price right. tickets. You know, $6, $7 a game, pay $2 for a beer. You free know, reasonable prices. Get, get a ticket, get a, bring a child, get a free beer. There you go. You know, every, every kid every, you run, you get a free beer. Every goal yeah. scored, get a shot. I mean, let's get serious here. I mean, no. Let's get these guys let's in get the, the fans. Hey, in, let's true. get the real fans you know, in here again. Who, 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 is, who is buying these tickets? It's, it really isn't the real fans. I mean, how many are corporate seats that they take off the taxes that they use just for entertaining, you know, these drunken slobs who come and probably never seen a hockey game or whatever, really don't appreciate it, you know? I mean, you know, the sport should be for the real fan, you know? It should not be priced, you know, out of, out of there. I mean, it's like uh, uh, basketball games, you know? Most of the people who go to basketball games are white, you know? But that's really predominantly black sport, you know? I, and, you know, you have the kids in the ghetto, who black, you know, you figure they want to go see the games, but obviously they're priced out of it. That's not right. I agree with you. You know, and that's not right by a long shot. And I think, you know, that shows it right there. The other thing that I find that's pretty ludicrous about sports is that, you know, a baseball team will have 3 million fans there this year. Right. Is there really 3 million people, different people that came to the game? How many people will repeat well, customers? Right. I mean, you may have 300,000 people that actually went to see all these games. Right. It wasn't 3 million. 
three million okay. different people. Right. right. So when they, oh, it was three million people. Wash that one right out. Right. right out. Wash it. I think it's unfair. I think we got to get to the, the problem, solve it. It's, it's just, it's bad. It's right. bad. Sports nowadays are bad. Paying a lot of money to see you know, these plays perform. Myself, I can perform up to the same uh, you know same category as these guys. Pay me a month, you know hundred dollars. I'm gonna play hockey. I'd love to see yeah. you go out there and get clocked yeah. by Ty Domi. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like, hey, Ty, I'm telling you right. You want to drop the gloves? Come Anytime. to my house. I'll tell you where I live. Anytime. Call my friend right Job. here, Mike Pedersen, the host of the show. Yeah. I'll take you on. Do whatever I gotta do. I mean, it's for money. It's for charity. Whatever I, I gotta do, because I'm that kind of guy. I'm not well, guy. what I like to see now is uh, is everybody's uh, getting back into playing the sports themselves. Especially yeah. the uh, uh, hockey has really risen with inline skates. The popularity has exploded. You get a lot more people playing. Um, I'm going out. I'm playing ice hockey. I know a lot of guys that like. Nobody cares if you're out. playing though. Oh, I care. <laughs> the whole point of this is there are leagues out there for kids to play, and you don't have to even pay a lot of money to play. And, and you don't you even to have to have any ability learn. because you will have a goaltender like Mike Pedersen in front of you one time, and you will score. Believe me. I have that from we, experience. We, we've That's experience. right. We've experience. experienced it. Even when he's on the same team as me. Even right. when he's on the same we've team. Experienced it. And My lucky charm over there. Um, you got something from the from the news that you brought up? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, what date was that? Friday the third. Friday, January third, nineteen ninety seven. Right. So at this point, that's actually about two weeks back. Uh, not quite. It's almost two weeks back. Right. But if you do have that edition of the news, uh, January third, it does go through a few things. Brian, you want to bring that up? Sure. Uh, this is a, a little article on adults playing hockey up at the Chelsea Rink and Abe Stark Rink. Uh, they say the uh, at the end of January, new leagues are starting up. Everybody and anybody is welcome to play. It doesn't matter your skill level. They will match you up to a scheme a team with skill level. Uh, there's a couple of numbers you want, want to call. Chelsea, for the Chelsea peers, it's 212-336-6100. Brooklyn's Abe Stark is 718-946-3135. Um, it costs about $190 for a 12-game uh, season. Like I said, in Chelsea Piers, they have a special evaluation where you can match up and they put you on a team. Uh, it's extremely enjoyable. Uh, the facilities up there are wonderful. You know, They've done a beautiful job over there. There is parking, and so you meet a great right. bunch of guys. Again. I could have sworn it's for Ignatz with a helmet and a cage on. I think he's there. It's not could have been Ignatz. It could have been, it could have been Ignatz. I don't know. All I know is this Ignatz has been missing for months now. I can't find him. I'm really going crazy. Spending a Every lot now and then he calls me up and says, when are we playing cards? You know. And that's uh, all I ever hear from him. When are we playing cards? Yeah, it, it's all about gambling nowadays, you Mike. Think maybe and, and he killed his girlfriend. That's why he's hiding out. Uh, maybe he tried to murder her the night the Rangers won the cup. Oh, yeah. Well, well witnesses. He threw her into me. He was witness. I think he was wearing Bruno Macley's shoes also Must that have been. night. Now he Must can die. You know what happens when you wear those shoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we well, got a problem our, with that one. One of our main yeah. programmers in the back room you can't see right now, he wears those same type That's shoes. That's right. Uh -oh. Beside Pumas and those Reeboks, those Dollar 99 yeah. Reeboks. You get the teeth. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we had enough of uh, the sports little segment here. Uh, I'm going to get away from these uh, two handsome young Bozos. men here. Bozos. My Bozos. two young friends here. We're going to go to a little video by uh, a band called Brad Factor. The, my next co-host, if you would, coming out, even Steven, who uh, happens to be a Brooklyn native. Uh, he's a bass player and a producer. He's also a songwriter. He's done some promoting in some clubs in the city. And uh, this is a tape of a band that he was in, as I said, called Brad Factor, a yuppie metal band, which uh, a lot of people who've seen him were very impressed by. Has anybody seen Ignatz? Uh, but Ignatz is not around. So why don't we just roll that tape and let's see where we go from here.
That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Brad Factor with Power Breakfast, starring my good friend here, even Steven, on the bass. Even? Thank you very much. You know, how are you today? I'm unbelievably great. I can't believe how good I am. It's, it's hard to even put it to words, Mike. So then shut up. Okay, you know, I could shut up. I have things to review. I could just keep my mouth shut. I don't have to say anything about the... Yeah, it's, I know, I know. You're going to carry on and carry on and carry on. But anyway, um, we got a few CDs here, some acts that Steven's worked with and Steven knows. Uh, I'd like to get just a touch on some of these so we have an idea of where we're going. If you've got any CDs, demo tapes, music videos, anything like that, send them to us. You'll see the address at the end of the show. Mark them to the attention of even Steven, and he will get them. We'll look them over and we'll see what we can put together on our next show. Um, I've got here four CDs. Uh, the first one is Lex Gray. That's right, Lex Gray and the Urban Pioneers. Uh, tell me a little bit about these. Well, they're a Brooklyn-based band and um, they perform live every Thursday night at the St. Mark's Bar down in the East Village on uh, St. Mark's Place in First Avenue. They also uh, will be playing on the 17th of... Uh, January at the Play Lounge in Queens in Maspit. Now this is one of the hardest working bands in New York. This is a band that defines, defies, excuse me, defies the realm of what the, the actual scene is out there because they're so different. They're like the 60s, but they're like the 90s. And it's almost, well you really have to see them to tell, to tell you the truth because it's not like anything else. It's, it's an acoustic vibe with with great music and a wailing singer. Lex is just phenomenal. Um, and to tell you the truth, I wish she would let me back in her band, but you know, <coughs> we'll get back to that at another time. Yeah. What else you got there? We got, the, uh, we got the fourth floor. We're all good people. Now, we're not on the fourth floor. If you'd like to go up to Jimmy's place and uh, Well, this is the third this. floor, but what you have there is actually the fourth floor. I see. There are another incredibly hard-working band. They're a party band. They, they redefine the word party and what it means in a band. They have crowds and, and so many people that come in and they're part of the show. Um, I worked with them a while ago and again, I wish I could have been on that album. I, I wish they would let me back in the band. Um, they just opened for Kiss for four nights in uh, Nassau or up in Connecticut and I think in Jersey, I'm not sure. And but we'll get back to them. So what you're telling me, in essence, is you play with these two people and they don't want to play with you anymore. Well, I don't know. But, you see, what we're going to do in the future show is I'm going to be stalking my old bands. Oh, you want to try to get I together want, with them I again? I want to stalk these people. I want to try to get together with them again, collaborate on something, whatever. Um, a lot of people I'm having a hard time getting them to answer the telephones. Um, they're sending mail back to me. Um, in fact, I think those letter bombs were intended for me. Unfortunately, the they bands. sent them in the wrong, to the wrong address. I don't know how that happened, but you know, this is the kind of luck I've been having. Well, that's the kind of luck that you deserve. Um, we got a band here called the Slash Tones, Episode One. Uh, this is a perfect example of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, not only will this, I can't get the band to play with me anymore, but they won't even finish the album. They won't finish they, the album. They won't finish the album. It's it's impossible to get everybody together at one time to, to work. Uh, it's But we're going to explore this great phenomena too, because in the future shows, I'm going to be revealing to the public out there in Brooklyn. Don't reveal too much, all right? We may well, get arrested. You know, we won't, we won't get arrested for this, but uh, you never know what will happen to me in my attempts to make contact with my past bands. Um, but I'm going to show what it's like to experience the rejection, the joy, the love, and the noise, and I hate to say this, but the smell of working rock bands. Oh yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of places that uh, do smell, quite literally. And then we have Hetty. Now Hetty, uh, another perfect example. We worked hard on this album for six months. We recorded it. Um, I haven't heard from her since. <laughs> you know, I've given her my beeper number. I've tried in every possible way to get this girl to work with me again. But what what can I do? So basically, what you're saying is that you're stuck doing a stupid show like this with me because really I'm the only person that'll deal with you. 
at this point. Well, that's correct. I know we hadn't spoke for quite a number of years. In fact, uh, I figured you had lost my number. You were hoping that I lost your number. Well, maybe I should have lost you know, your number. I, you know, I haven't been abused by anybody as I had been by you in the past, and I kind of looked forward to it. And um, lo and behold, here you called, and now I have a new place, a, a couch. Well, what does Hetty do? Hetty is what a. What kind of music is this? Hetty is a, a songwriter, um, producer herself. Um, she is young, alternative, and uh, following in the steps of Madonna and Alanis Morissette. Uh, creating her own style. She does it with style. She's a stylist, and she's a shaker and a mover. And I could probably use a stylist, you know. I haven't had a yeah, yeah, you know, probably a while. Yeah, she probably cut your hair right off. Yeah, yeah. Right off. Didn't leave one of yours? She did not uh, do my hair, no. I, Who did that, Long Doctor? I, um, I did it myself. I can tell. <laughs> I know. I missed. A.K.A. Norelco over there, right? It's one of the things. Actually, no, I started off cutting my hair just the other day after listening to a Neil Young song uh -huh. and being called Chicken. I decided, okay, I'm going to do it. So I went in the shower and I took my razor out and I started cutting. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have much up there to begin with. One at a time? Well, it sort of seemed like it was one at a time. It took much longer than I thought. I should have probably buzzed it down before I went to the yeah. actual, but I didn't do that. You I know what you should do? You know the tape that the women use for their bikini lines? I'm going to be doing that, that with, on your head. No, I'm going to be doing that with my chest and my arms, and then later on with my back. I, I see. Like, you know, I see. You know, I, I contemplated, you know, using some of those creams to remove it, but um, it wouldn't be painful enough that way. I understand. We're back here, uh, Brian's rejoined us with uh, Stephen, and he, Brian, you had a question for Stephen? Uh, regarding a band that you thought you saw one time? Yes, even Steven, uh, you know, you guys been traveling around playing and everything. You guys played your own hockey games? You guys know the Star Spangled Banner? Uh, we've heard of the Star Spangled Banner. Um, we've been to hockey games. We love hockey games, but um, every time I try to bring the band in, I find out that we're not really scheduled. There's always a hassle of one sort or another. One sort or another. And what about guys running around with sticks? Does that scare you anyway? Well, I originally uh, had been beaten by a hockey player years ago. Um, I got over this, the fright. Uh, the sticks don't scare me anymore. It's the pucks I, w I worry about. Ooh, yeah, remind you of some of the hamburgers in high school, right? What about the one I just had this morning? <laughs> what is that, Wendy's? Oh, sorry. Uh-oh, uh -oh. uh -oh. cut uh -oh. that. Uh -oh. Strike that. Screw it, leave it on. But, um... Uh, you never saw a band that actually played while they were on skates? Oh, hold on, we got a phone call coming in. Hello. Hi, Mike. Michael. Hi, this is Mike. Michael. Mike Pedersen. Never heard of him. Hi, this is Jumpin' Joe Ceruso. I'm on location. I uh, think I've tracked down Ignatz. Oh, yeah? Where are you? Um, right Ignatz. now I'm in Buffalo by Niagara Falls. You're in Buffalo? I'm in Buffalo. Uh huh. I left your show and uh, unfortunately I had to leave. Uh, believe me, I'm, I'm not too happy about it, but I had to go. I traveled down to Buffalo and I heard some uh, strange coincidence to think, think, think that uh, Ignatz was floating in a barrel. He's floating in a barrel. He must have been disappointed that the Bills lost. Well, I don't know if that's Ignatz, but I'm on the trail. I'm just calling in to let you know. Uh, next, we're going out to Wyoming. I hear that he's going to be coming out of a buffalo. Uh, that's uh, up here. You can't see it on the uh, map, but I got Wyoming up here. You know, we got the rest of the West over here, too. If, I, if I'm correct, that, that's probably a map of Arizona. Oh, well, Arizona's on this uh, side over here, baby. Oh, okay, we're going to be traveling down Arizona, too, probably on Tuesday. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm on Ignatz Trail. I'm just calling to let you know. If anybody's seen Ignatz, please call in or write to the show. Um, of course, probably to you, if they see Ignatz. And I'll track him down for you, and I'll, I'll keep coming in to you as, as much as I can, okay? You got it, Dad. Uh, Mike, uh, you, you got keep, it, tough guy. You keep pumping it right there. You got it. All right, pencil neck. I think All right. he's going to need a into Arizona. Yeah, Brian thinks you need a passport to get into Arizona. A passport? Yeah. Hey, listen, do they have any bass playing goalies? Uh, no. No, huh? You know what? Hey. Take it easy, all right? Hey, listen. Yeah. Hey, the board of health sent me a look. <laughs> you got <laughs> lost there, huh? The board of health sent the letter to take a shower. Yeah, huh? All right. Yeah, have a nice day. We're back now with Vin Sin, who is a uh, studio owner as well as doing our audio mix today. He uh, owns and runs Electric Plant Studio on Flatbush Avenue here in Brooklyn. Utica Avenue. And Utica Avenue. Thank My you. apologies. Take the...
pull my foot from down in my lungs at this point. Um, and he's Stephen's going to be talking to him about uh, getting some things together on the music scene in Brooklyn. Stephen. All right, so Vin. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Very good. You know, it's good to be back here in the home country for me. I've been uh, out of Brooklyn for, for quite a number of years here. You didn't miss much, let me tell you. Well, I'm sure. But uh, what I want to know is where is the scene in Brooklyn? I hear that there is no scene, mm -hmm. and I know that there's got to be a scene. I think you're looking up the wrong tree there, brother. There's oh, not I much going on. Manhattan is where it's at right now. You're going to have to hit all the, the small clubs first. That's my advice would be the downtimes, the spirals, the continentals, your CBGBs. Uh, maybe boosting up if you could get into Irving Plaza and places like that on the next tier. You know, it's a lot of politics involved right now, and, and it's like, you really, it's just a tough get at the beginning. You're not going to make any money. You know, it's, I guess Manhattan's more of a showcase town, as, as it seems right now. You know, it's more, I guess, a place to make connections and stuff. And, you know, get known that way. I mean, that seems to be the scene right now. Brooklyn, since Lemoore's closed... There's really no clubs for the kids to play. There's just that lot of backs joining. Lamore is, is closed. Well, it's still some kind of disco. I'm wow. not going to say the name. And they had a little uh, legal problem there, so it had to close up. I don't know if you heard about that on the news. Nah, uh, I've some been in kind a... of uh, kick out thrown off the stage or something. You know. But it's all been... one of those uh, moshing situations. Yeah, there. you heard about that. Yeah, but now like the legalities of the whole thing is coming into place. And I think all the clubs now are, uh, in, I think, enforcing these uh, slam laws and stuff, no stage diving and stuff. So I actually may have. You know, benefited the kids, so they're not going to get hurt in the future from the bouncer throwing off the stage. You know, so but the the scene, you just got to get a band and get out there and get known, and you know, don't expect. Send to us much. a CD or a video, and we will try to get it on the air. Yeah. Plus, go to your studios, make your CDs. It's always a good thing. You know, it seems to be the way to go, now, especially with the internet happening and all, all this stuff going on on you know on the web. You could actually sell your music on the web right now. Okay. Well, we're running out of time here. I'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in to us. Uh, we'll be back next month with another show. This is our first one. Give us a break. We're only getting started here. We had a couple of flubs. Have a nice day. See ya.